So continuing on with factoring polynomials, in the last video we learned why we factored instead of divided, and we learned our first technique of common factor technique. In this video, we're going to be learning the next technique, and the first one of those is factor by grouping. Now, before I actually get into a full-fledged factor by grouping, I want to kind of do some baby steps in between. Some people have a hard time seeing how factor by grouping works, so hopefully after I've worked through these three mini examples here, you can fathom the process that we're going to be using overall. So I'm going to focus on example one first, and I'm going to factor this using the only technique that we know up to this point, which is factoring by common factor. If I look at my two terms here, x squared y plus 2y, I notice they have a common factor of y. So I can take out my common factor of y, and that leaves me with x squared plus 2. And you can always check this by distributing that y back through. If you did, you would get back to the original problem. Now well, let me take example one and let me make some minor adjustments and that's what we see down here in example two. I have x squared times y plus two times y, but this time my y is in parentheses rather than it just being multiplied in the regular fashion. So my question to you is, is there a difference between example one and example two? And if so, what difference does that actually make? Now, the answer to that question is there is no difference between example one and example two. In example one, I am representing multiplication by just sandwiching those two variables together, but I could have easily put a dot in between, or I could have easily represented that multiplication by parentheses. So, in example two, I'm still factoring out my common factor of y. But since it came in parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in parentheses. If I take that out from both terms, that leaves me with x squared plus 2. And again, you can check this by distributing that y with or without the parentheses back through. So my purpose of that was saying that it doesn't matter whether I have parentheses or not. I'm going to factor it in the same fashion. So that brings me to example three over here. I have x squared times 2x minus 1 plus 2 times 2x minus 1. Now, if I look at this and I ask you how many terms you have, you might be kind of confused by this because this doesn't fit our typical polynomial format. But I still, just like in example one and example two, only really have two terms here. I have one main addition sign, so I have a term here and I have a term here. So if I look at those two terms and if I look at the parentheses, notice that they match exactly. So it wouldn't matter if I just had a y in these parentheses like I did in example two, or if I have a 2x minus one in these parentheses like I do here. Since they match exactly, that becomes a common factor. And if I factor it out, basically divide it out, that leaves me with x squared plus 2. So that says I can factor out parentheses. It doesn't matter how complicated the inside is like this or how simple it is like in example 2. If they match, then that can be factored out just like doing a common factor. So Example three is what our factor by grouping will look like after we do a step to get to that point. So let's see some actual factor by grouping examples. Now, some hints to help you out here. The only way that we can do factor by grouping is if our polynomials start with four terms to begin with. If they don't start with four terms, then factor by grouping does not apply and I cannot use this method. And just like we saw in the last examples, once we get to that step with those parentheses, those parentheses must be identical. And because they are going to be a common factor and we factor them out. If they're not identical, then it's not a common factor and we cannot use our factor by grouping technique with them. All right, so let's start with example one here. 
Factor by grouping does exactly what it sounds like it's going to do. You're going to group them. And you always group the first two terms and the last two terms if your polynomial is in descending order, which it should be at this point. Now, notice I grouped these with underlines and not parentheses, and I did that for a very specific reason. And that is because in specific examples, if you put parentheses in there, that actually changes the problem. And I'll show you that here in a minute. All right, moving on with this factor by grouping technique. All we're going to do is be doing a common factor technique a whole bunch of times. So in my first group, I want to look for a common factor. So a common factor here is x squared. If I take that out, I'm left with 2x minus 1. Then I have my addition in the middle, and I do a common factor in my last group. So in that group, I have a common factor of 2, and if I take that out, I'm left with 2x minus 1. Now, I've basically taken this from four terms to two terms, where these two terms are separated by the plus signs. If I look at these two terms, I have something in common, those parentheses of 2x minus 1. Since they match exactly, I can take out that 2x minus 1, and that leaves me with x squared plus 2. And that is the end of my factor by grouping technique. Now, just like my common factor technique, you are always more than welcome to check these. In this one, since we ended up with a 2 by 2, or a binomial times binomial, I would check these by foiling it back out. And if you do that and end up with the original problem, then you have done it correctly. So let's move over to example two. And since I've shown you an example of factor by grouping, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can factor this one on your own by using the factor by grouping technique. So the first thing that I want to point out is notice in example one where I grouped them with underlines and I told you I'd show you why. Well, let me prove that right now. So if I would have grouped this one in parentheses, that would have actually altered my problem because this is a negative here. And if I put those parentheses in there, that actually means that negative is applied to everything in those parentheses. But if I looked at my original problem without the parentheses, I really know that that negative was only meant for that 3t. So that's why I suggest that you group these by underlines rather than parentheses, because if you use the parentheses, that sometimes changes the problem, like in this example. So now let me do my common factor. In the first two terms, notice that I have a t squared in common. If I take that out, I'm left with a t minus 5. And notice in my last two terms, I have a 3 in common. So I'm left with a t plus 5. But for a factor by grouping to work, my parentheses must be identical. They must match exactly. And they don't. My first one has a negative, and my second one has a positive. So that either means we did something wrong or that this one does not factor by grouping. Now, this one does factor by grouping, so let's figure out where this error comes from. And it comes from that this problem actually does have this negative in the middle. Whatever your middle sign is, that will always stay as the middle sign. So in this example, it's a negative. That's going to be a negative here. Now, that's really like me factoring out a negative 3 as opposed to just a 3. So if I look back at here and I take these numbers and divide it by a negative 3, that actually changes what I had come up with. So let's try and figure out what I should have left in these parentheses here. If I take a negative 3t and I divide it by a negative 3, that leaves me with a positive t. And if I take a positive 15 and divide it by a negative 3, that leaves me with a negative 5. 
So that means if I factor out a negative from my second set of parentheses, that actually turns this positive into a negative here. That actually changes your original sign. And now that I did that, notice my parentheses match exactly. Since those parentheses match exactly, I can factor them out. And that leaves me with a t squared minus 3. And in these factor by groupings, you must have parentheses around both sets of factors as your final answer. So that is my answer there. And again, if you always want to check this, you can do that by multiplying it out or foiling it in this specific example. So that's going to end this video over factor by groupings.